Hi, I'm Zain from National University of Singapore. So to, my module will be on organic chemistry, which is a core module for all the chemistry majors that's in NUS. So today I'll be talking about some of the fundamentals before we go into the real organic chemistry stuff. So first, we need to ask ourselves the question, what do atoms look like? So I'm sure some of you have know that there are SPDF orbitals, but when we talk about organic chemistry, we mainly look at the S and P orbitals, which are this is the S and this is the P orbital. But things are not so simple. Carbon, for example, has four electrons in its valence shell, so it has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. However, we know that it can form four bonds, and for example, in methane, all these four bonds should be equivalent. So you shouldn't be able to distinguish the electron from the s2 and the p2 orbitals. So in this case, hybridization occurs, and all the electrons that are involved in bonding would be in sp3 orbitals. So for most organic compounds, we de will deal with these three types of orbitals which is sp3, sp2, and sp orbitals. Usually, to, to know which hybridization the molecule belongs to, you can look at the shape and the geometry of the compound. For example, if you say tetrahedral molecules, which are molecules that are bonded to four different compounds, usually they will have sp3 hybridization. Take note that for oxygen and nitrogen, the lone pairs can also reside in hybrid orbitals. So for example, if I have water, the oxygen actually has four orbitals and it's in a tetrahedral geometry. So it will also have sp3 hybridization with two bonds and two lone pairs. sp2 hybridization applies more for trigonal planar molecules. One example that we know would be ethene. In this case, the carbon here has three bonds, so it's in a trigonal planar state. And the, the unhybridized p orbital would form the pi bond. For sp hybridization, we have linear molecules. For example, this molecule here or in carbon dioxide, the central molecule is sp hybridized. Take note that hybridization gives different properties to the orbitals. For example, s orbitals have more s character compared to sp2 and sp3 orbitals. So for sp hybridized molecules, the bond lengths are usually shorter and stronger. One effect of hybridization is acidity. For example, in this molecule, these protons are more acidic than, say, a simple alkane proton. Reason being, the negative charge from this proton, after you deprotonate it, would be nearer to a nucleus and hence it will be more stable. Let's talk about functional groups. Functional groups are different parts of the molecules that give rise to different reactivities. They dictate how a molecule reacts and they are usually where the molecule reacts. So I believe some of you would have known some of these functional groups. So let's just have a quick summary of all these. So first, alkanes are simple saturated hydrocarbons, which are very inert. So they are usually not much interest to us. Functional groups are parts of the molecules that give rise to different reactivities. And they're usually how and where the molecule will react. So let's go through some of these functional groups quickly. First, we have alkanes, which are just saturated hydrocarbons. They are pretty inert, so you usually don't have to worry about them. Alkenes have CC double bonds, and they are also known as olefins. These are usually considered electron-rich. Alkynes are just compounds with a CC triple bond, and similar to alkene, they are quite electron-rich too. However, it is very acidic compared to other hydrocarbons. 
Aromatics and other plane ring molecules obey this rule called Huckel's rule, which will appear in the later chapters. One example of an aromatic compound would be benzene. These compounds are usually quite inert, but they can react under very special conditions. The next set of functional groups have oxygens in them. So alcohol is just a simple OH group. This can act as both acid and base. Carbonyls usually refer to ketones and aldehydes. In this module, carbonyls are electrophiles and they are prone to attack by nucleophiles. Carboxylic acid has a C double bond O with an OH group and as the name suggests, they are quite acidic. Esters are just like carboxylic acid but they have an OR group instead of OH. So the R stands for alkyl groups and they can be used for any kind of hydrocarbon chains. And hydrides are structures like this, but they are very reactive compared to esters. And lastly, acid chlorides. So these are also very reactive. The last group will be groups that contain nitrogen atoms. Amines are just simple in our three groups. And these are very basic compounds. Amides have a C double bond O with an NR group. And amides are not basic, unlike other nitrogen containing compounds, because the lone pair of nitrogens will be conjugated into the system. Lastly, amines are groups with C double bond N. So one of the aspects in organic chemistry you sh should know is nomenclature. There would be much emphasis for this module, but you need to remember some points because it might appear in the mid-semester test. So the important things to know about nomenclature is firstly, be consistent. So you should know where to allocate your first carbon and where to start counting the chain. Number two, you must always remember to count the longest chain. For molecules with a lot of branches, you need to look at all different branches and try to come up with the longest carbon chain. And thirdly, you must be able to draw the structure from the name. So besides coming up with names, you must also know how to decipher the names and draw. So there's also many ways to name a same compound, but you must be consistent and you must be clear in what sort of functional groups at which position and it's useful in communicating info to others.